The word salat means prayer, but it also means thana, praise. So when we say that, O oh Allah, you send your salat upon your prophet, what we mean is that, O oh Allah, you praise him before your muqarrab angels, before the angels who are close to you. Meaning you mention him and you praise him in the best gathering. So Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. There is another meaning of this also, which is that, O oh Allah, send your blessings, your mercy upon your prophet. But the stronger of the two, but the stronger of the two opinions is actually the first one. Because many times in, in the words of salat upon the Prophet وسلم, Allah's mercy and blessings are mentioned separately also. So salat means thana, praise. كَمَا صَلَّيْتَ عَلَىٰ Ibrahim, That, oh Allah, send your salat on Muhammad وسلم, and his family, which is his children, his close relatives, his wives, just as salayta, you sent salat ala Ibrahim upon Ibrahim. Meaning just as you praised Prophet Ibrahim and you exalted his name and you exalted his mention, just like that, exalt the name and mention of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam also. Wa ala ali Ibrahim and just as you sent salat on the family of Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua to Allah that, O oh Allah, grant me good mention amongst the people who come after me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Ibrahim alayhi salam that he would make him a leader for all people. And this is true. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam is respected, he is praised in the Quran by the Muslims and also by so many other people. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here that, oh Allah, just as you have given a good name, a good mention to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and his family, we ask that you give a good mention and praise and name to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And that will happen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will praise Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam before his angels. إِنَّكَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ Indeed you are Hamid and Majid. Hamid means one who is praiseworthy, one who is deserving of praise. So, O oh Allah, you are deserving of praise. You are perfect yourself. And the one who is praiseworthy will only do what is praiseworthy. So, we mention the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here in a way of asking him that, O oh Allah, you are praiseworthy, so you also praise your servant. And you are majid, you are noble. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad. That, O oh Allah, you send barakah, blessing, upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is meant by barik is that you bestow your gifts and favors and endless good, abundant good, upon your Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala ali Muhammad and upon the family of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kama barakta ala Ibrahim just as you bestowed blessings upon Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim and upon the family of Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid indeed you are praiseworthy and you are one of glory and honor here we see that in this in these words, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his blessings upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the form of praise, in the form of good mention, in the form of gifts in the next world. Why? Why do we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do that? Especially in salah. Because out of all people, the person who has benefited us the most is actually Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in salah, where we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, we also ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and reward the person who became the source of benefit for us, who guided us to the right path. And that is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After this, we can make any dua. 
But there are some du'as that the Prophet ﷺ would make and some du'as that the Prophet ﷺ actually taught some companions. For example, we learned that Abu Bakr anhu asked the Prophet ﷺ that, O oh Prophet, teach me a du'a that I can say in my salah. That, O oh Prophet, teach me a du'a that I can say in my salah. And the Prophet ﷺ taught him this du'a, which is, Allahumma inni zalamtu nafsi. Allahumma, O oh Allah, inni, indeed I, zalamtu nafsi. Zalamtu, I have done zulm, I have oppressed, I have wronged nafsi myself. Zulman, oppression, kathiran, a lot. Meaning, I have greatly wronged myself, O oh Allah. I have done a lot of damage to myself, O oh Allah. I have harmed myself a lot, O oh Allah. This is not referring to just physical harm that a person may do to themselves, no. This harm is actually referring to the harm of sins. And by saying this statement, a person is actually admitting their sins, that, O oh Allah, I have sinned a lot. And by sinning, by disobeying you, I have actually harmed myself. Wala illa anta. Wala and not yaghfiru, he forgives. Adhunuba the sins illa anta except you. Meaning there is no one at all that can forgive sins except for you. Meaning my condition is that I have wronged myself a lot by committing many sins. But I have nowhere to go except to you. Because only you can forgive sins. Then we say, فَغْفِرْ لِي So forgive me. Meaning, oh Allah, you forgive me with مَغْفِرَةً A forgiveness that is min indik that is from you. Meaning that is especially from you. Because what comes especially from Allah is perfect and beautiful. So we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here for complete forgiveness. 